Hello, and welcome to the watering hole. Thanks for checking out this clip. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that'll make the baby Jesus cry. And I know how much you guys love making the baby Jesus cry. But as I explained to you off of the air, the scotch makes the tweets more fun. So we're going to get into the tweets now after I I'm looking forward to this. My microphone. OK, we're starting with uh, Aaron Simons. Um, this was in response to Blair White. I forget what Blair said. It was something about guns. It was something stupid. It's Blair White. <laughs> um, but Aaron Simon says, if guns are taken away, knife crime will rise. If knives are taken away, something else will be used. Forks? Pens? Where will it end? Guns aren't the issue. Are guns removed from military due to friendly fire <laughs> over the years? No. Why? Because they're small anomalies. <laughs> God. Okay. Someone someone posted something like this on Facebook and my response was please show me the last time 14 children were killed with a knife. That's like That's what I said was like if I'm in some scenario where like some evil god says, "Hey, I'm making someone attack your kid's school. You get to choose the weapon." He's either using an AR15 Absolutely. or a knife. I'm picking the fucking knife. Yeah. Every time, no question, no thought required. It's a knife. And I had, to, I actually posted something to that effect on Twitter. And I had someone respond to that with be like, oh, well, knife wounds are actually like really, really nasty. And they're more damaging than gun wounds. Like not AR-15 wounds. Decapitated. It's like not, okay, first off, not AR-15 wounds, maybe handgun wounds, but not AR-15. Like I've, I've read, um, I've read accounts of ER doctors that have responded, like they've, they've been responsible for patients that come out of these mass shootings. The mm -hmm. AR-15 just destroys any organ that a bullet from it touches, it completely destroys it. Knives don't do that. Um, but then also like. You, you hear about these stories of people that like attemptive murders where the person was stabbed 13 times and they still didn't right, die. And pulled through still. It is and hard. It, when it was one person because you physically cannot do the same like level of damage to that many people in that short space of time. Yeah. With a knife. No, you can't. It's not possible. And Unless like, you're like even, an X-Man like, or something. Maybe this is callous of me, but like if the knife attacker is focused on one person then every other person can run away yeah. or even maybe stop them like it, it's much easier to stop someone with a knife than with an assault rifle yeah i'm not attacking someone with an assault rifle and like even like the kids running away yeah maybe he can throw the knife but like a it's really hard to throw a knife yeah. with enough accuracy to actually do any damage and b he's now thrown his only weapon so attack oh. is over you've got the weapon now like so yeah no I, it's really it's not the gotcha that they think it is no like, not even it's close just it's dumb people are commenting on the kitty yeah the, the kitty's i mean the, the, kitty the kitty is, is important. the kitty is here because she thinks she doesn't have food in her dish but she does and it's just about medicine time she likes her medicine food like the, we we uh she doesn't take pills very well um but she takes the medicine crushed up in like a pate and she likes food, the pate yeah. better than her dry food. <laughs> so she's so like, she's like yeah, I have dry food, but it's about medicine time. So I'm going to bug him and maybe he'll feed me medicine. All right. And we've got some Dinesh D'Souza tweets. The January 6th hearings aren't a trial. Like, no, they're not. No, they're not. They're, 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 <laughs> they're, they're literally not a trial. That's um, why they're called hearings and not the January 6th trials. There is no other side. Yeah, because the other side doesn't have any good points. This is a show trial in Stalin mode. <laughs> Guilty until proven innocent. No, it's no. no, it's not. Actually, this isn't a trial. This is a presentation of the findings of the committee. And if like if the presentation of the findings has you feeling like it's guilty until proven innocent, then maybe he's guilty because they're not actually doing a trial. They're just presenting their findings. <sighs> He says, no wonder the left, the left loves it. It's a symbol of the tyrannical one-party state they're trying to install in this country. Everyone that I know on the left is complaining that there aren't enough parties. Yeah, I, th I think most people I know would say, actually, we don't want even a two-party system. We want more than two because that's a better idea. Yeah. Like I like I like the Canadian system where like I can vote for the NDP party and it's not 
throwing my vote away. Yeah, right. But they're not one of the two major parties. Like, yeah. I actually have an NDP representative in the federal government right now. I um, used to vote Liberal Democrat when I was in the UK. ND NDP, for the record, is uh, the New Democratic Party. They would basically be like, uh, it's hard to compare them to something in the States. If AOC joined a party in Canada, it would be the NDP, probably. Might be the Green Party, but probably NDP, because they're more realistic than the Greens. Uh, Donald Boatger for $5 says, so kids in the Uv in uh, Uvalde are are just small anomalies, eh? Nice. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting from the A that maybe you're Canadian, Donald? Oh, oh British. I, I say A a lot. You know what? <laughs> I've gone on rants about this before, but since since you are British, maybe you'll appreciate this a bit more than the Americans. But um, <laughs> the Google spell check drives me fucking nuts because as a Canadian, I have to choose between setting my Google spell check thing to either British English or American English. There is no Canadian English. And Canadian English is a weird hybrid of the two where, yes, I throw the extra U's in. But also, I spell realize with a Z instead of an S. Ooh, witchcraft. Yeah. So, like, if I said it to British English, it's going to... It'll trip you up on the Zs. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been in the US long enough now that I legitimately forget the correct way to spell things. I second guess myself very regularly on, does this have a Z or an S? And does a U go in here and... Also pronunciation, like how do I pronounce this word? I, my mother I've, will disown me. I've sent a lot of like on my Google Docs, I will send a lot of like really spicy feedback back to them and like, hey, I'm Canadian, <laughs> bitch, come on. Um, but that I, I've basically just gotten used to like a bunch of words being underlined in mm. either blue or red, depending. Yeah, I um when we do um, I'm, so I'm currently editing the second Sumerian grammar book that Josh and I are putting together and it's half Sumerian so there's just red absolutely everywhere which is really frustrating because if there is an actual English typo it's incredibly difficult to see it because yeah, every fifth is word is underlined in red anyway yeah <laughs> yeah anyway I think we kind of tore that apart as we went yeah, through it yeah. but we've got another Dinesh D'Souza oh good says, for Bill Barr, thousands of random people going around cities like Atlanta and Phoenix make geotracking the mules, for for reference, if, you, if you're not familiar with his 2,000 mules thing, I'll get into that later. Is this uh, like the, the geotracking wild the mules hogs? Utterly impossible. No. Uh, <laughs> by this logic, thousands of people going around Washington, D.C. on January 6, 2021 would make geotracking of the Capitol protesters also impossible. So a lot of things here. Okay, so the 2000 Mules documentary, my understanding is that the I, I haven't actually seen the whole thing. Um, my understanding is that the premise is that they um, Dinesh D'Souza or his organization bought geotracking data from the cell providers on millions upon millions of cell phones for these various cities like Atlanta and Phoenix. Millions of people live there. Mm hmm. And they found a couple thousand in total across all the cities that went close to several ballot drop box locations. And so from that, they have decided that these people that went close to more than one ballot drop box must have been must mules have been. that were carrying extra ballots for Biden and stuffing the drop boxes. So I need to introduce a phrase at this point to Mr. D'Souza. Correlation does not equal causation. Also, maybe just the law of large numbers. Yes, <laughs> yes. Like when you have a city full of millions of people, there will Odds be several thousand be that few, go past yeah. the same few points. Especially because ballot drop boxes are often in community well, centers really, where are places yeah, where people are likely areas. to go past anyway. Um, but then he's saying that by this logic, you couldn't use geotracking data data to show that the capital protesters, the capital rioters, the capital insurrectionists were actually at the capital. But like that no, whole no, thing I think wasn't you can based do on that. But even so, just ignore that. That whole thing was not based on geotracking data. That was based on like actually seeing the people there doing it. 
Oh, perfect. The best he yes. has in his video is a guy with a suitcase that when actually looked at, it's a normal ballot dropbox lockbox type thing. Like, that's the best he's got is a thing that's normally at these ballot they locations. They walked past a thing. Mm-hmm. And I... Don't quote me on this. I don't remember the details, but there was like a delivery company that was like, one of our drivers goes past like five of those locations every single day. Like this is nothing. Like if that's if... amazing, that's amazing. And also, just for just just to boot, Dinesh D'Souza, his resting face looks like he's always smelling like the least pleasant fart. <laughs> like that's just what he looks like all the time to me. I I don't know why, but it makes me laugh. <laughs> Oh, okay. Anyway, moving on. We've got uh, Jake Paul. Always fun to go to Jake Paul. I don't know a lot about him, but I know that nobody likes him. At least no, nobody good likes him. He says, uh, Biden accomplishment. <laughs> accomplishments. I'm not pouring another That's glass. Scotch. I'm not pouring another glass. Just Biden accomplishments. Number one, highest gas prices. Um, I live in Canada. It's incredible that the U.S. president can skyrocket gas prices over the entire world. I'm just going to look. I'm just going to convert it because we, we do liters. So I don't know what my price is per gallon. But I, I paid two dollars and five cents per liter today. I don't know, whatever. I'm paying like $2 a liter for, for gas. It's something like $9 a gallon in oh, Canada. Wow. It's always been more expensive here. Yeah. Um, like I like Buffalo has historically some of the highest gas prices in the United States. And I have frequently gone to Buffalo for cheaper gas than what we have here. Wow. Now, there are some reasons for that. We pay more taxes it's on our gas. absolutely Biden's fault, though. Yeah. Yeah. Completely Biden's fault. There are reasons for that. Like we pay higher taxes on our gas here. We have like carbon taxes and crap that's on the gas okay. here. Mm -hmm. um, but like at the end of the day, like it's our gas prices have gone up like right right now. I pay two dollars and five cents per liter. Normally we pay about a dollar per liter. A dollar thirty was considered high and we're at yeah. two dollars and five cents. Yeah, that's not Biden. Yes, it is. It's the world. The entire no. world is how, like Biden. maybe maybe a war in Ukraine with no. Russia, one of the world's leading oil producers. Or Absolutely Biden. Oil. Yeah, sure. It's Biden. <laughs> Worst inflation. I'm not an economist. I don't know what's going on yeah, with the inflation. I, no, but... I, I don't. But I'm pretty sure the president doesn't control inflation levels. He can control the country's reaction to it to a degree. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but what I what I liked the most about this was plummeting crypto prices. So Jake Paul is known for promoting cryptocurrency. And one of the big selling points of cryptocurrency is that it's supposed to be inflation proof and it's supposed to not be affected by like centralized governments. Amazing. So either they've all been lying about crypto being impervious to government intervention or Biden did the crypto thing. But also, I kind of laugh Probably. at the, Like, yeah, when crypto that's... goes down, I laugh at the crypto bros. <laughs> um, highest rent prices ever. Canada's got higher, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, my my house that I bought for $120,000, uh, right now, I could probably sell it for six to 700000 wow. I bought it for one hundred twenty. Um, I have no intention of doing that because if mm -hmm. I do do that, then I have to buy another house in this market, which would be For an equally. Insane. Yeah. Um, I will probably take out an, a secured line of credit at some point. Just be like, mm -hmm. Hey, I've got $400,000 of equity. Can you give me $10,000 in a secured line of credit so I can get my kitchen redone? <laughs> sure. Why not? Um, but, uh, I'm yeah, curious yeah. about 0.5. I, what incomprehensible are we i don't know the is fact this... that they is a singular pronoun i was gonna say is this a shot at pronouns i think so i'm because not sure really i think everyone understands it they just don't like it 
Kitties knocking stuff off my desk. It is their way. As kitties do. Yeah. Oh, no. that's a loud purr. Yeah, she. Oh, happy she, cat. She's a really good cat. She, uh, I've, I think I've heard her hiss once in the like seven years that we've had her. Wow, that's impressive. She, she's a very happy cat. <laughs> she's a very content cat. She's good with the kids. She tolerates their nonsense all the time. And she's she's actually dying. I'm kind of I'm like, oh, no. yeah, no. Was, well, her medication, she's responded very well to the medication. Uh, the vet didn't expect her to last for more than a few months. And it's uh, more than a year now. So. Which is good, but also sad. Yeah. I didn't expect my wife to die before my cat. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, not to bring it down. Let's let's move on to the next tweet. <laughs> Jesse Dornfield says you can't get conscious consciousness from natural causes. Science hasn't explained consciousness. What's it like to be you isn't centered in the brain. Um, counterpoint. Yes, it is. Phineas Gage. Uh, what do you do with blind? OK, this is where it goes off the rails. What do you do with blind people? For example, they still have first person narrative, even though about 60 percent of the brain is for seeing. I don't, I don't know about the 60% of the brain being dedicated to seeing, but that like, what? Even, even if that's that's just like a bunch of words that he picked out of a dictionary and shoved together into a sentence. Yeah. That, that does not make any, even, even if the 60% of the brain is dedicated to seeing is true. That's like. Okay, obviously the seeing part isn't the part that's responsible for consciousness and who you are. That's just responsible for seeing. What? But like you make changes to the brain, you make changes to the person. Yeah, that's it's like what? Pretty is, uh What? It's why people with neurological degenerative diseases change. Because their brains change. What? Or it's it's why people like us with ADHD have problems with our prefrontal cortex and so aren't able to do executive function stuff that we're supposed to be able to do at this age. That one has me stumped. Yeah, this is a weird one. Uh, yeah, I... I'm I'm very confused about the blind person bits. Is he saying that blind people should not have a sense of self? Yeah, I think I think they're, they're saying blind? that like I think they're saying that if consciousness is derived from the brain, then blind people wouldn't have it because so much of the brain is dedicated to sight. Well, surely if they're blind maybe they have space in their brain for other things. Maybe. You'd think. Maybe. I mean, I, I'm, I maybe, have no idea. I actually have no idea how it works. Maybe our brains are but... adaptable and can, like, compensate for things. Shocking. Shocking. This person's an idiot. I'm, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even know what to do with that one. Anyway, moving on. Rob Robinson. Oh, Rob Robinson. It's always fun when he shows up on Twitter. He says, There is good reason that atheists and progressive scholars such as McGrath, Ehrman, Baden, and Bowen. You, 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 you know Bowen, right? I do. He lives just, in my house. Just a little. You, you might be slightly familiar with him. A little bit. Cannot be biblical scholars. They do not have the Holy Spirit who reveals the depth of wisdom in the Bible. No person not born of the Spirit can be a true biblical scholar. I just, this argument really bugs me. It's it's lazy and it's dumb. And it's saying that I don't have to engage with the actual evidence you provide because you're not a true Christian. So you can't possibly have a solid understanding of the Bible. Like, come on, dude. If Actually you, address the evidence. If you don't start as an evangelical, you can't possibly have good conclusions. This no. this tweet is actually how I got you on the show. Because I... I tried to get Josh and he was like, no, nah, Megan would be better at making fun of tweets than me. <laughs> Megan's more more happy to be mean to people on the internet. <laughs> I don't so I just gen I generally don't like this person. I, I don't know him 
obviously, but he well, pops up occasionally because he takes shots at Josh and, and Joel Baden um, and Shannon, I think, as yeah, well. He, he has a just... whole article written about Shannon being paid <sighs> by YouTube or something. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. And the thing that really, really annoys me about these kinds of arguments, specifically in relation to Josh, is because he was a pastor for years. He was a chaplain candidate in the Air Force. He was a died in the wall evangelical Christian from the time he was like five until his 30s. It's and, and, and they turn around and say, oh, he was never a true Christian because true Christians don't move their face. Fuck you. Well, that's, that's it. Seriously, like, fuck you. I looked at this list. I'm not terribly familiar with McGrath, but my understanding is that McGrath is a Christian. Um, Ehrman, obviously an atheist. Um, He's agnostic. Agnostic? Ehrman mm -hmm. or McGrath? Ehrman. Okay, Ehrman's agnostic, but um, yet yeah, not a Christian. Yeah. Used, to, used to be evangelical, but is now mm -hmm. agnostic. Uh, Baden, Jewish. Mm -hmm. So this kind of ties into my thing earlier about um, how evangelical Christians look at Judaism and how like they interpret the Jewish scriptures yeah. from an evangelical point of view and say that the evangelical interpretation should be the Jewish interpretation, but it's not. Yeah. Um, and then Bowen, of course, atheist. Um, like he kind of runs the gamut here, but like all of those people, like. <sighs> Now, one of my one of my problems with this is his use of the word progressive, because mm. um, my I, I I I sat I sat in on a class with uh, Professor Baden on uh, on the Book of Exodus, mm -hmm. and my understanding is that a progressive would be like trying to impose progressive ideals onto the Bible. Like That's kind of the Jesus, sense you like get. gay people and mm -hmm. like anything in the Bible that you find that's against gay people is being misinterpreted. Um, Baden doesn't do that. No. He very much will he tell won't. you, this is what I think the original authors intended. I don't mm -hmm. think the original authors were very progressive. Um, but then he will explain why he thinks that they were wrong ultimately. But um, it's it's not like they're not imposing their progressive agenda or whatever you want to call it yeah. onto the Bible. They're interpreting the Bible in as far as they can tell the the way that it was supposed to be interpreted by the original authors. But therein lies the problem because they're interpreting it as an ancient text and not as a divinely inspired like rule book for how modern people should live. Yeah. And this is where I, I hate that evangelicals do this because it le like, and I will fully admit that atheists kind of fall into this is that the, Oh, the Bible is so it, it teaches all these mm. shit things. You can't learn anything from the Bible. The Bible is a beautiful insight into ancient culture. It's mm -hmm. fascinating. I would love to study the Bible and figure out what the original authors were intending, but this, stupid evangelical just take everything in it literally approach yeah. just kind of kills all the nuance exactly takes... you lose you lose so much yeah. by taking it that way you and it's yeah <sighs> i hate it like i i love the bible from a cultural perspective mm -hmm. but like that, it's fa that it's doesn't, fascinating that doesn't it's mean you have to take the rules in the bible as rules that we have to live our lives by now because they said so then. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's it's just weird to me that atheists tend to take a more nuanced view of the Bible than the people it's, that accuse. Since getting involved in the atheist community, I have met so many people with such strong understandings of the Hebrew Bible specifically because I, I don't talk to people about the, the New Testament so much, but such strong detailed understandings of the Old Testament and scholarship surrounding the Old Testament. And they, by and large, spend far more time actually thinking about it and its cultural context than I would say most Christians I know. Because when you treat it as a source of inquiry rather than the end points that cannot be questioned, I think you you get a much a much richer and deeper appreciation of it. That's I've I've made that the title of previous live streams is that like 
the the evangelical Christians lose the beauty mm-hmm. of the Bible because like and and they contribute to even atheists coming out thinking, oh, the Bible is nothing more than an immoral mm-hmm book of fairy tales written by go herders yeah it's like no it's so much more than that mm-hmm. if we could only get past this stupid literalist interpretation of yeah. things like genesis it's like yeah there are th- like yeah i know that the evangelicals don't take everything literally but they take way too much literally more than they should so anyway speaking of evangelicals on to frank turek Oh, goody. It says, if you think it's evil that God doesn't reveal himself to you more directly or more persuasively or in more ways, you're actually presupposing a standard that this God ought to do this. Well, where are you getting this ought from? Uh, personally, I'm getting this from the verses in the Bible that say that God wants everybody to be saved. Yep. Like, I don't remember. I think it's in Peter. Somewhere first Peter, I want to say. Um, I don't remember specifically the verse, but like there's one where it's like it is not God's will that any should perish. He like he wants a personal relationship with all of his creation. Yeah. So like if I take the Bible at face value, like Frank would have me do, God says he wants a relationship with me. First step to a relationship saying, hi, Hi. I am so and so. (laughs) Nice to meet you. So many apologists post and I'm like, I'm not sure you've read the Bible. Have you? Or like all of it and not just the bits you like? I I feel like not. I have mixed feelings about Frank. I feel like his Twitter is run by someone else that's not as intelligent as him, but mm. also he's not very intelligent. <laughs> so that's not really a high bar to cross. There are a couple of, of agno- uh, not agnostics, of apologists on Twitter that post such inflammatory stuff. And I'm like, I don't know if you actually believe this or if you're saying it for the engagement. I think are, are you I, I know I know sometimes some of them mean it and, and sometimes I'm pretty sure it's it's just shit posting. Are are you thinking of maybe Cameron there? Maybe. <laughs> I feel like his his videos are much better than his tweets. <laughs> you're better than me. I don't watch his shit. <laughs> oh, I don't watch a lot of it, but like... <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I mean, he, he Cameron kinda, and SJ. He, let's let's oh, go with Cameron and SJ. Don't, no, SJ's garbage. She, oh, she is. She absolutely she's, is. She's just but, garbage. But I, I think some of her stuff was posted to be deliberately inflammatory. Yeah. Rather okay, than because yeah. it's a sincerely held view. Yeah, but at least Cameron, I can see he's trying to drive engagement to his YouTube channel, which I yeah. think is his main source he, of income. He, uh, SJ, I don't know what her goal is. It. Oh, Lord only knows. I think to piss me off personally. (laughs) Yeah. Well, Cameron's one of those people. I think Cameron is genuine. I believe that Cameron is genuine. There are people that I I have my doubts about, but he's not one of them. I think he genuinely believes what he says. I don't agree with basically anything that he says. Yeah. But at least he's he comes he's across saying it sincerely. Yeah. yeah. He's he's one of the apologists who and I, I don't interact with a lot of apologists because they annoy me. Um <laughs> <laughs> Josh, Josh has a lot more of that. But Cameron is is one of those who I know like I don't worry or get anxiety if we have an email from Cameron in, in the digital Hammurabi inbox because he's always kind and polite and i know he's not trying to pick a fight with someone okay i just have to say in the chat there's a person named wesley who's been posting a lot of stuff in not english and something that's not in the uh the latin alphabet so i don't i don't even know what language is it hebrew yeah um and somebody's saying shut up wesley with the star trek thing (laughs) (laughs) i don't know what wesley is saying I, I hope it's something I don't, relevant. We need Josh in here. Um, and now he's doing it in Chinese. Oh, no, Chinese. Wow. Okay, Wesley, come on. Come on. This is probably I, the wrong Do I need to time you friend. out? Please stop. Spam bot promoting crypto? You'd think you'd do it in the language that's the same as the, uh, the rest of the chat. 
My little three button thing isn't working. I was going to time them out. Oh, well, the stream's almost over anyway, but um, ah, there we go. Put user in timeout. There we go. Bye, Wesley. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> oh, no one likes Wesley. I love Will Wheaton, but Wesley. Oh, Crusher he's was, the greatest. But Wesley Crusher was so funny. kind of a an, an annoying character. Yes. Yes, he was. He didn't age well either. He got more annoying, I feel, as he got older. Yeah, but they kind of sidelined him more as he got older. Like they focused <laughs> more on him when he was younger. Um <laughs> Yeah, okay. So Wesley's in a timeout now. Anyway, I forget what I was gonna say. Uh we're kind of coming to an end here. Um uh, so thank you so much for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. I had so much fun. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Um yeah, I definitely appreciate your input. I definitely prefer it when we talk about like abortion and stuff to have someone that actually has a womb on the <laughs> channel. Because I feel like after like, that Roe v. Wade thing happened, there were yeah. so many streams, and I was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" It's a panel of men. Do yeah, you not like, know a woman who could talk? Just, just for like an hour, maybe find go and ask your mother. Or one of you must be married. <sighs> no. Married to a woman, I should specify. Yeah. Anyway, so thank you so much for joining me. It has been a pleasure. Um, if people want to hear more from you, go to digitalhammurabi.com. Links in the description, as well as a link to buy the Atheist Handbook to the Old Testament, Volume 2. Um, which, says, strictly speaking, that's Josh, but... Yeah. You're half of Digital Hammer. <laughs> um, I do all of the edit. Well, most of the editing. We had someone else copy edit it this time. But. Uh, every like, I always, I kind of want to hire someone to edit stuff for me, but then it's like, eh, I work so quickly that it's like waiting on someone else would feel wrong. <laughs> like same thing for thumbnails. I'm terrible at thumbnails. I like your thumbnails. I'm not good at them though. <laughs> Uh, so like, I, I'm always like, oh, I want to hire someone to do the thumbnails. It's actually not that expensive to, to hire someone to do with the thumbnails. But like, by the time I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking of a thumbnail, it's like, I can schedule I the video now. and forget about it. Yeah. Or I can wait two days for someone to get back to me and say, oh, yeah. like that's, that's actually one of the most, so I've got a Surfshark sponsorship. It was a six month contract that expires in July and I'm actually Surfshark itself, it's a good product. I would not mm -hmm. be advertising it if it was not a good product. I use it myself. Um, and my representative that like is the go between between me and Surfshark, she mm -hmm. is great. I have no complaints with her. But um there's just random things that kind of annoy me about it. That's like I'm not gonna sign another contract with that, like not mm -hmm. for six months, like maybe one month at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, but like uh, like I don't know. They they have me like they they're giving away their antivirus software for free. You don't need antivirus software. You just need to be mm. like not an idiot. You just need to be not an idiot and use Windows Win like keep Windows Defender updated. You don't mm. need antivirus software, but I have to add that into my video now. And it's like mm, VPNs have that, legitimate yeah. uses. Third party antivirus software not so much. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of hate that. Um, so I'm probably not going to sign on with another long-term contract with them. I'll take it month by month if I have to, mm -hmm. but, um, I forget where I was even going with that. I was going somewhere. I can't but, remember either. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. So, um, I have my video for Friday is unlisted right now because they have to review the ad, even though it's oh, one that I've already used like, okay. five times. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I was planning on writing a new ad for everything, but then like my wife died. So my life changed significantly. So I can't really do that anymore yeah. so i'm just reusing ads um and i hate it it's not that i hate them it, it right but it's having to rely on some a way for someone else to give you feedback on something and you're like it's ready to go i don't want to change it oh, there there was one of my videos i'm technically in contract violation because the video did not fulfill the needs of the contract but i wasn't informed of that until like 2 a.m of the day the video went live it's like no that's not enough time to change it no and like i have a schedule to keep it's like yeah like my schedule might not be part of the contract but it's my schedule i can't but i'm not making changes at 2 a.m 
Yeah. Or indeed the day that something's supposed to go live. That's a little bit silly. Yeah. Now that one was around a holiday where they were taking some time out of the office. So it's like they let that one slide. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. But still like, I don't know. I, I, mm. I like having sponsorships because it, it, it does allow me to like cover stuff that might potentially get me demonetized mm -hmm. and I can cover it without fear of that because I'm still getting paid for it at least. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I, I won't promote anything that I don't believe in that I don't use myself or that I wouldn't mm -hmm. like, but um, yeah, it's just, I, I long-term contracts aren't for me. Like I need it. I need it. I need to hire people to deal with that shit for me. But yeah. I don't have the money for that. <laughs> Train one of the kids. <laughs> Lily is now my uh, my social. I was going to say person. she's got she's got the brains for it. Maybe. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I think it's time my that pleasure. I hit the end credits button. <laughs> it's been great. Um, need to find that button. Check super chats. <laughs> it's I've actually got it on my stream deck. It's it's reminding me to check the super chats because I always forget that. But um, yeah, no nothing new. So. End credits now. Thank you for joining me, Megan. Thank you for joining me, Periwinkle. And uh, um, catchphrase sign off, I guess. I don't know. I'll figure something out eventually. <laughs> Bye, guys. Catchphrase sign off. <laughs> <laughs>